Noses are for breathing, mouths are for eating. Don't be a mouth breather. What's up everybody? Coach Zach here and today we're talking all about nasal breathing. Why you should be breathing with your nose and not your mouth. Now you might think to yourself, what's the difference? Air is getting in my lungs whether through my nose or through my mouth. And that's what we'll be covering right here, right now. Now before we go into the benefits of why you should be breathing with your nose, let's first talk about why you should not be breathing with your mouth. Besides looking like an idiot with your mouth hanging wide open, mouth breathing causes a lot of problems that will accumulate over time. Look at the entire animal kingdom. Animals don't breathe with their mouth. The only example that you can find is probably your dog. Your dog will pant with its mouth wide open, but that's in order to cool itself off. Most animals don't breathe with their mouth unless they're in trouble. Breathing with your mouth will also cause you to use your accessory muscles to breathe rather than your primary muscle, which is your diaphragm. You will be breathing using your intercostals, your scalenes, your upper traps, and your pecs. Breathing with your upper respiratory muscles will send the signal to your nervous system that you're in distress. It will release the stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol, and get you in that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system state. Breathing with your nose, on the other hand, primarily will be engaging your diaphragm to breathe. Another big problem with mouth breathing is that it will cause dry mouth. Now what does dry mouth mean? Dry mouth means that you will have smelly ass breath. No one's going to want to talk to you. No one's going to want to have anything to do with you because you got stank ass breath. So get yourself a breath mint, shut your mouth and start breathing through your nose. Another problem with dry mouth is that it can cause gingivitis. You may begin to have a lot of problems with your gums and just a lot of overall dental problems breathing through your mouth. Another huge problem that mouth breathing will cause is that your facial structure will begin to change over time. Now this won't happen overnight, but years of mouth breathing habitually will cause these changes to take place. The reason being is that when you're mouth breathing, your tongue will not be in its correct position to support the structures of your face. I will make a whole nother video talking about tongue posture and what I mean by that, but for right now just know that mouth breathing will cause your tongue to droop down away from the roof of the mouth, which will cause gravity to push down on your upper palate, leading to sunken cheeks, a narrower jaw, a crooked nose, crooked teeth. Overall, you will just be a lot more ugly than you actually are. Another problem that mouth breathing will bring you is that you will be way more likely to have forward head posture. Forward head posture has so many problems that a lot of us deal with in today's age with our phones and our computers, but mouth breathing isn't helping you at all. It's causing you to send your head a little further forward to allow air through your mouth. So now that we've gone over why you don't want to be a mouth breather, let's talk about the benefits of breathing with your nose. First of all, inhaling through your nose will filter the air out. You have nose hairs after all that will filter out dust and other particles in the air. Your nose will also make the air warmer and it will humidify the air, which will make it so the air is more digestible by your lungs. Breathing through your nose will give you approximately 10 to 20% more oxygen uptake than breathing through your mouth. Hey, come over here, have a seat. We gotta have a talk about something that's a little complicated. I'm gonna do my best to simplify it. Let's talk about carbon dioxide. It's a gas that so many of us think is a waste material that we wanna get rid of, right? A lot of us think that we want oxygen, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So we think that the more that we can let go of carbon dioxide, the better that we are. Here's the problem with that. It's not true. Carbon dioxide is extremely important for allowing the oxygen that's in our blood to get into the tissues of our body that needs it. This is known as the Bohr effect. No, I'm not trying to bore you. This is B-O-H-R, Bohr effect. What this says is that the only way that the oxygen is going to go from our blood into our brain, into our muscles, into our organs for them to be used is in the presence of carbon dioxide. The blood is just the way that the oxygen is being transported. It's not doing us any good staying in our blood. We need it to go from our blood 
into the tissues of our body that needs it. So if you're a mouth breather, every time you exhale out of the mouth, you're letting go, you're offloading a lot of carbon dioxide. Over time, this will cause you to disrupt the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide. This will alter the pH of your blood, but it will also cause the blood to bind to the oxygen, not wanting it to let go. So even though you're fully oxygenated in your blood, that oxygen has nowhere to go because carbon dioxide is not present. In simple terms, you need to have carbon dioxide present to make the oxygen useful to you. This is where nose breathing comes in. When you make a habit of breathing in and breathing out of your nose, it will naturally keep the perfect amount of carbon dioxide in your body to allow that oxygen to be used. Another important aspect about nasal breathing is the production of nitric oxide. Now you may have heard of nitric oxide before. It's in a lot of pre-workout supplements. It's also in beet juice, which is why I love drinking beet juice before my workouts. Nitric oxide is produced inside the nasal cavities. It's only produced when you breathe with your nose. And what it does is when you breathe through your nose, nitric oxide is produced inside your nose, which is then traveled down your airways into your lungs. And what nitric oxide does is it's a vasodilator. It will dilate the airways, allowing air to move more freely in. Once it gets down into your lungs, that nitric oxide will travel into your blood, making it so your blood circulation is a lot more effective. This will cause so many positive effects in the body. For one of them, it will reduce high blood pressure. Think about it. What is high blood pressure? It's the force of blood inside your vessels being too high for the vessels that they're in. So if those vessels are bigger, then there's less force on the inside surfaces of those blood vessels. It can also help prevent clogged arteries, high cholesterol in the blood vessels, and in some cases, it may also help prevent stroke or heart disease. All of this can only be achieved through the production of nitric oxide, specifically in your nasal cavities. Breathing through your nose can cause all these positive effects due to the production of nitric oxide. So overall, today we went over why you should not be a mouth breather. We went over the problems with breathing through your mouth and the benefits of breathing with your nose. And if you think about it, the stereotype that mouth breathers are dumb is actually kind of true. Because if you're breathing with your mouth, you're not getting the oxygen in your blood to the brain that needs it. So that means that you're probably showing up in your life a little bit dumber than you would if you would just shut your mouth and breathe through your nose. So that's it, thank you all for watching. If you like this shirt, check out my boy, Troy Blyden. I'll link him down in the description below. I will be making a follow on video, giving you some practical breath techniques that you can use to unclog your nose and just make you a more efficient nasal breather. I'm Coach Zach, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was... Close your mouth and breathe with your nose, my man. Or my woman. Or my girl. Okay.